Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. We are discussing all of my product fails for the months of April, May, and June. I did a video like this where I talked about my product fails for January, February, and March. And I'm gonna link that down below for you. I need some gloss on. It's been a day. Okay, so a lot of this is skincare not gonna lie okay but I wanted to kind of like talk about it these are things that I've either purchased gotten in boxy charm boxes and we're gonna talk all about them so the first one here I've had since December I have used uh, I used it for a long period of time I only have like this much left it's the Tula um, keep it clear acne foam cleanser this did nothing for my acne this says it has salicylic acid um, a 2% al salicylic acid treatment in here uh, this literally did nothing but dry my skin out. I did not fix any of my acne and I do not recommend this. This is a he this has a hefty price tag on it and if you want a good acne whatever the heck, I would just go with Neutrogena. This is not worth your time. I got this in a boxy charm and I was so excited and this just did not live up to the expectation. So I'm overall I'm very disappointed with it. It also smells really really bad. It has since I got it. It smells like musty like if you're going into like a really old and musty house. That's what that smells like. Another kind of acne product. I bought these because I was literally desperate. It's the Clearasil Rapid Rescue Deep Treatment Pads Salicylic Acne Medication. I used a lot of these. Look, I used a lot of these. I finally came to the realization that these do not work whatsoever. This literally dried out my skin. That's it. It did nothing else. And I am so disappointed in that because, you know, when it says rapid acne cre treatment and whatnot, I want it to work. And it says visible, visible results as fast as four hours. No. This also had 2% salicylic acid. No, 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 no. Um, Neutrogena makes good acne pads that I have used in the past that I really, really like. It's just, it's so disappointing because somebody who has even worse acne than me, I know there's a lot of people out there who have a lot worse acne than me, their hopes will be crushed if they try these products because they, it was just not good. Yeah, very disappointing overall. Um, I have never really tried anything else from Tula or Clearasil, so I can't really give you a recommendation from other, from like, for like another product or whatever, but definitely a disappointment. This next one here, this is from Bliss. And you guys know I love Bliss. I love, they have a great uh, pore patrol, the mask is called Pore Patrol. I did a whole video on my favorite masks for oily skin. I really enjoy that. It was such a good mask and it's by Bliss. I think it's like 18 bucks, under 20 bucks. And then they also have this fabulous foaming three in one face wash. And I love that. That is so nice. It really gets into your pores and cleans everything out. And I tried this because I really, 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 really wanted this to work out. Okay. I saw so many people saying how much they love this. The Jelly Glow Peel Gentle Non Abrasive Exfoliator with Fruit Enzymes. I cannot use this. I can't get past the smell. This smell, oh my god, like I get, I seriously might gag. Like it is so bad. I don't know if it's just mine or what, but I cannot put this on my face. I, this was only like nine bucks. This wasn't very expensive, but this was horrendous. As far as exfoliating, like I tried it like once. It did an okay job definitely not impressed with it and I probably wouldn't recommend something like this to you because it just it smells so it smells like rotten fruit yeah like if you left like a garbage in a hot sun all day that's what that smells like and I'm not about to like frequently use that and I thought oh I can get past maybe I'll get past the smell like it's fine I cannot get past that smell I don't know what is in there maybe if I go to Ulta maybe I could like smell them and just kind of like get like an idea but oh my goodness, I can't do it. I have, a, I have a couple more skincare products. This one was also from a BoxyCharm. It's the Juice Beauty Stem Cellular Anti-Wrinkle Eye Treatment. And I got this a few months back. It looks like this. This is like an $80 treatment because Juice Beauty is a more expensive skincare brand. I had high hopes for this. I thought this would be a really nice um, one for like, the, for like under the eyes near the edges of the eyes and this made my skin burn oh my god it literally felt like I put hot sauce on my under my eyes it was not fun and it just 
I, there are so many better like anti-wrinkle eye treatments that don't make your eyes burn. And I don't really know what the ingredient was in this that made it do that. I can't do that. No, 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 no. So this was a fail and I just, it literally left my skin like almost like dry and like a little swollen. I realized like, you know what? I'm not about that life. I haven't really tried anything else from Juice Beauty or else I would recommend something. But a lot of this stuff I do get in BoxyCharm and I kind of like realize, is that good or not? The next one is uh, the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow AHA Resurfacing Night Serum with Hydrating Honey and Gentle Flower Acids. This also came in a boxy charm. The thing is that this is just too hydrating for me. This made me very, very oily and I woke up in the morning with really, really oily skin and that is just not how you want to wake up in the morning and I usually don't wake up in the morning like that so this was just not it for me. I mean like it, it's a great product and will probably work for someone with more dry skin but for me I just can't do it and I tried just putting it on my cheeks and it just kind of left like a weird film and made my skin like more oily than it really should be. I got this setting spray from BoxyCharm and it's the In Beauty Project Power Up Dual Phase Setting Mist and it says it's supposed to help glow, hydrate, energize and help to set makeup, energize and revive skin. Looks like this. This looks like wait, like a makeup remover. You can see really up close. It's like separating and you have to like shake it up that already kind of weirds me out okay but it comes out like pretty fine like it has a nice nice mister i just don't really see any benefit from this or anything from it so i just wouldn't recommend it because it, it kind of weirds me out how it's like literally separating like it separates pretty darn quick like it's already doing it i don't know there's something about it i'm just like Ugh. I think I'm better off without it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it per se, but it just kind of didn't feel like it was helping me in any kind of way. It wasn't doing anything good or bad. So I guess it's not really like a fail fail, but still it's not really like worth it. And I think this is like 30 bucks. I got it in a box room. I didn't pay like full price for it, but I think if you were to buy it, it would be like $30. Why would you spend $30 on that when you can just, you know, get something cheaper that's better? Like. Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. This is great and it's half the price of this. I have done, I did a review on this last summer and I'm gonna link it down below for you. I have tried, tried so hard to like this foundation and I can't. I can't do it, it is just, I, I just can't. I have used this multiple times. Like if you look in here, like I've used this a good amount. I have tried, you know, and I can't. It's the Makeup Revolution Fast Base Stick foundation. This is a very, very thick, creamy stick foundation. As you can see right here, sorry for the swatches. They were from yesterday's video, so if you haven't gone to see that, you should. Um, it is definitely full coverage. It is really nice. Okay. I cannot handle that it doesn't sink into my skin. It doesn't build up very well, and it just really breaks down throughout the day. No matter what kind of primer, even if I use my Holy Grail Tarte or Cover FX or Touch and Soul, like it's so heavy on the skin. And you know, there are places where I say, need a little more right here, you know, and you build it up. Norm a lot of my foundations that I like um, do that very well. This does not, it feels like paint on your skin. Look at that, like that, it's a thick, thick foundation like I wish you could feel how thick this is and it does have a very greasy feel to it too and for that reason for those reasons I just I can't have this in my collection and I do not recommend it. Makeup Revolution does have fantastic other foundations like their Conceal and Define foundation wonderful I think they have a great mascara concealer you know that kind of stuff their eyeliner is great I, I just don't recommend it. We have a primer here that really did me dirty and I'm not very happy about it. It's the Catrice Prime and Fine Pore Refining Anti-Shine Base, okay? This is for, this says keep me matte on it. Meaning, I wanna be matte. So why is it three hours after I put on my makeup, I look like a literal shiny disco ball. Catrice. This is like a lotion-y type primer. It feels like a lotion. Um, it feels like, it reminds me of like the Tarte hydrating primer like the base tape um very thin it feels like a nice like face lotion um nothing wrong with that but there i don't see anything related to you know oil absorbing or anything like that 
and I'm just I'm not impressed with this and I kind of expected more because I've heard a lot of good things about Catrice in general, so just kind of disappointed in this. If you saw my May Boxy Charm, you saw that, I think that's my May Boxy Charm, you saw that I hated this and it was so bad. It's the Pretty Vulgar Eyeshadow Primer. I don't, I'm not one to use eyeshadow primers. I use MAC Painterly Paint Pot, but that's about it. And so when I squirted this out and I, it's a nice nude kind of base, looks like this, kind of creates it's kind of turns clear but if you see in that video it like literally stuck my eyelid like together like even right now it just feels like sticky residue that like a five-year-old would have on their hands kind of thing not in a good like oh it's tacky it's good for eyeshadow you know no this is not <laughs> no 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 I don't recommend this if you want a really good eyeshadow primer Mac Painterly Paint Pot is really good I used to really enjoy Urban Decay primer potion as well as Too Faced shadow insurance I know Emily Noel 83 also likes the Milani eyeshadow primer so check that out I don't think this one is worth it I think it was like almost 20 bucks and so it's just not it and literally my skin still feels like icky and gross so no I also got a brush set in that month's box and it was from lavish and it came with these two brushes okay it came with some other ones but these ones are horrible um this brush right here this is a pencil brush this has a point on it I don't know how to describe it this has a point on it so much where it literally like hurts my eye a makeup brush should not be hurting my eye it also came with this brush this is a fine liner brush I hate these kinds of brushes no matter what like it's it no this is way too thick to be a liner brush i'd rather use something angled or whatnot like that is going to create a line that is so thick and just like not good and i wasn't impressed with it it said like the five brushes were like 30 dollars i do not think that that was that whole brush that was worth it they have a couple other eye brushes that are okay they're not the greatest though okay this last one i feel like i'm gonna get a lot of hate for this i feel like i might get some hate for it the Iconic London Illuminator. And I, I've i seen so many people talk about this and I got this in my boxy germ and I thought, oh my God, I can't wait. This is, this retails for $41. And I put it on how I do my liquid highlighters. I do not put liquid over powder. And I learned that trick from Tati. I love Tati so much, will forever love her. And she gave me a, a she gave a really good tip one time where she said, don't put your powder, your liquid products, liquid highlighter, brushes, anything like that on top of powder. So I didn't do that and I don't do that. So I take this liquid highlighter, you know, I put it on my, you know, foundation and everything and it literally like broke down my foundation and left like a streak. You could literally see my skin through the highlighter and it wasn't my foundation. It literally broke my foundation down and I did not appreciate that. I did not like it and yeah, but it is, so Chloe and so beautiful it does I also really did not like how oily it felt on the skin it literally feels like I'm rubbing like kitchen oil like vegetable oil or canola oil on my skin and I don't like that um and I think with all those oils in there it did break my foundation down and oil is gonna do that and so I feel like they need to make it maybe a little less oily and maybe a little more like liquidy or maybe like water like maybe more of like a water base in a way instead of like an oil base because that feeling it just I can't get past that I'm a tactile person I like like you know touching stuff feeling stuff and that's just I that's just who I am and I did not like that so um I don't think that this is worth $41 it is so beautiful um maybe if you have drier skin this would work for you but since for me I have combo oily skin this just did not work for me I recommend if you're gonna purchase this touch it in a Morphe store or something um I know everybody's makeup preferences are different so with that just keep in mind like you know if you love any of these products don't think that you know I hate you or whatever um, Iconic London makes an amazing brow cushion it is so good and I definitely recommend that from them um, pretty vulgar has great eyeshadows and whatnot Catrice has a fantastic concealer I was gonna say primer no concealer that's like six or seven bucks at Ulta and I definitely recommend that if you have 
any um, other fails that you personally would like to share, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear all about your fails and I do this every few months. So please let me know and I will see you in my next video. Bye.